The fact that the other side continues to double and triple down on this craziness has given the Republican Party a unique opportunity to be the party of objective truth and reality. This isn't a very high bar, and it is sad that our culture has evolved to this point. But we need to seize this opportunity to pull our constitutional republic back from the brink. I probably don't need to convince any of you that our country is in bad shape economically and our border is a mess. I also, let's see. <laughs> serious than in the past because the Democratic Party in this country has abandoned liberalism for leftism, and leftism has destroyed nations like nothing else in history. Someone wise, has said, one, someone wise once said that there are four boxes for protecting liberty. Your soapbox, your free speech, the ballot box, your right to vote, the jury box, your legal, legal right to representation, and the cartridge box, a right to bear arms. And we need to exercise those rights and those orders, those order because if we ever were to get to the cartridge box, we would be in a disastrous situation. So it's imperative this November to get out and vote and get all of our conservative neighbors to go out and get out and vote. Um, in uh, 2022, Joe Kent was narrowly defeated by what, 2,000 votes? And, uh, and this was due to low voter, voter turnout by Republicans. What was the voter turnout? We're missing about 60,000 voters who voted for Trump in 16 and in 2020. Yeah, so it was a terrible, uh, so a lot of, it was a, with a few percentage points, we could have pulled that, that election, you know, in yeah. Joe's favor. And so there's no excuse for for that kind of uh, behavior from Republicans. So um, we can't lose elections this time around because we are sitting because we were sitting on the bench as Republicans, our very republic hangs in the balance and we must rally every Republican, moderate, independent, and sensible Democrat we know to vote conservative in this election. So if you guys notice, there's a sign-up sheet in the back table and there's also a um, registration thing, a uh, QR code that you can sign in. And that, that helps me to, um, to basically reach out to you guys with information because it's an expensive and time-consuming and inefficient uh, method to get the word out when we're doing uh, canvassing. So it, it helps me to have all emails and send, it, send stuff out to everyone. And uh, Steve will thank you for uh, not having to <laughs> walk this far on the, the neighborhood. And also there's a Restore Votes initiative out there that, um, that if you ask Steve, he can give you the details, but it brings some sensible, um, some sensible measures back into our election process here in, in Clark County. And so please sign that. We need uh, 35,000 signatures by May 25th on that. And if any of you are interested in helping out with that effort, we need more um, people who are willing to gather signatures for that. And in addition to the Restore Vote initiatives, there are many ways to volunteer in the Clark County Republican Party this season. And over by the registration table, there are some, um, some cards from the, some three to five cards from the uh, Republican Party that have a QR code. You can basically volunteer and you can say, I want to do election integrity, I want to do this, or I want to do that. And the form will slot you in, and so the party can basically say, okay, these people want to do this, we're going to turn loose on this area, and, and so we're working on that right now. And before I mention or introduce our speakers, I want to mention some some uh, Republican candidates who are unable to be here. First, Stephanie McClintock is running for re-election to the State House of Representation. I can bring him to our neighborhood for another town hall or point you to another speaking event for him in Clark County. Um, and just in the interest of uh, full disclosure, um, Dave, there's another candidate that's a Republican candidate that's running against Senator Bird. I'm not endorsing, but um, Dave Reichert. Um, but if 
whichever Republican candidate comes out of the primary, I'm going to support against Bob Ferguson because Absolutely. Bob Ferguson is a disaster. Yeah. I'm saying, so. Yes. And so I encourage everybody to not just listen to me on who to vote for, but to go out and meet the candidates on their own and make their own decisions. And there is a um, there is a town hall that Dave Riker's going to be at um, at the firmly planted, uh, firmly planted school. And so if you want to meet him, you can go meet him, and hopefully Sunny Bird will also be there as well. Okay. I basically I didn't think Dave Riker's uh, record on um, some of the, the COVID medical freedom stuff is as good as Sunny Bird, so. Some of those things are why I'm looking for some of instead. But, um, but whichever one of them comes out of the primary, I would support it. And so, um, let's see. Oh, and so lastly, I want to promote um, Pete Solano. He's, he's running for attorney general, and we've got some of his flyers, and on the very end, you're welcome to take some, to take some of those, but Pete Serrano is it's a very important office. Pete Serrano is the founder of Silent Majority Foundation, and he's helped litigate. He had a cushy job in corporate law, and he left that job to start a foundation to fight for um, our, our, our rights, basically. Um, a lot of the doctors that were sidelined by some of the medical, um, by the Washington State Medical Board. He defended them, and he also defended the, the Gator Guns um, uh, lawsuit that you guys may be familiar with. He's defending a lot of Second Amendment medical freedom. And so he basically quit his job to start the foundation to do that. So I highly recommend that you guys support Pete Serrano for um, Attorney General. We get um, a Republican governor and a Republican attorney general that would be amazing for our, our state.